All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give our honor, glory, and, pra and praise to Lakia unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone for teaching us all this truth to rule well. All right, I'm going to be going into uh, wherever the Spirit leads me. All right, but right now I want to mention all right, the mark of the beast. You know, because the mark of the beast is the RFID chip, you know, which is coming closer and closer according to the times, all right, with these uh, cities that they're trying to build, smart cities, all right, trying to build up upon that, you know, they have your debit card, your credit card, all right, which leaves a digital footprint, all right, so when it comes to buying and selling, you're not going to present yourself with, you know, with a, a uh, uh, what is it called? A, a theology or a way of idea, a Scientology, all right? Which Scientology means uh, uh, study of knowledge, all right? Which the true knowledge is in the scriptures, you know? Because that's what the future events consist of, consists of the skip scriptures, you know? So the RFID chip, being presented, all right, in these times, reflects with Revelations 13 and what we believe being the mark of the beast, all right? So let me get that real quick. Revelations chapter 13 and verse 16. And it says, and he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. All right, you have these Israelites that'll go into the word scop uh, scopeo, all right, which means to scope out, all right, to mark, you know, which is in the scriptures and it talks about mark those, all right, that, that that offend this gospel, you know? So they want to go into that and say, oh, well, see, you know, they, that word mark there is scopeo, all right? So the mark of the beast is something that you observe. That ain't it, man, you know? Same thing with, with the servants of Yahweh Bashim, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, that are gonna be sealed, all right? That doesn't mean that the Lord is going to come down. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is going to come down with a stamp. All right? And he's going to stamp you on your forehead. All right, there you go. You, you're one of mine. You know? But it's not going to be given to them, man. You know? So the mark of the beast is the RFID chip. All right? And that word mark, all right, in Revelations 13 and 16 is the word charagma. All right, charagma, which means an incision, all right, an imprinted or a carved mark. That's what the word charagma means, all right? An imprinted or a carved mark, you know? And when you imprint, when you go into the word imprint, it means to press down with great force, all right? to press down with great force. You're not gonna press down with great force, all right, the image of, of, of Cesar Borgia in your head, man. All right, this is a, of a physical press down, a physical force, all right? You're not gonna physically beat it into somebody so that they can go into a gas station and say, I believe in, in Christ, all right? That's not even his name, you know? So whether you think you know what the mark of the beast is, all right, it comes down to knowing, not to thinking, you know? Because the only that are gonna be saved, the only ones that are gonna be saved are the elect of the nation of Israel, all right? Which is made up of you so-called Negroes, so-called Latinos, so-called Native Americans, you know? And to the scattered abroad. So this isn't given to all the nations out there, man. So it says, verse 17, 
and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name all right and the way that they break it down nowadays all right by nowadays i'm saying outside of great millstone is that the mark the karagma all right the mark of the beast is a is a is a spiritual mark all right and you can't buy and sell because of the sabbath that doesn't make that doesn't make any sense man you know so what happens after the sabbath all right so is the mark of the beast gonna be given to you on a sabbath day you know the thought process of these people man anything to escape from the reality of things all right anything to escape from the reality of things even if they're saying the same thing all right even if they're saying the same thing we're saying all right but if it's not according to how how they believe just because of what we believe it's not right all right and that reminds me a lot about these jakes man these jakes going way the hell off man you know thinking that they're funny with their friends thinking that it's something cool you know to to join israel or thinking that it's cool to come up against the prophets thinking that it's nice thinking that it's fun you know hey yahabashim yawashah has a special uh, 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 uh judgment for you man This is Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 11. Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence. Touch no unclean thing. Go you out out of the midst of her. Be ye clean that ye bear the vessels of Yahweh. All right? So we're not supposed to be, you know, uh, What's that English word? Uh, uh, mixing among, all right, Babylon the Great, you know? We're not supposed to be forcing ourselves into Babylon the Great, man. When this place is going to be fucking destroyed, you know? What good, uh, what good is it fixing a, a thing that's going to be destroyed, you know? Especially some place as wicked as this place, man. So it says, verse 12, For ye shall not go out with haste, nor go by flight. For Yahweh will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. All right? So you're not going to go out by yourself into the land of Israel, and I'm going to save myself from the mark of the beast, brother. That's not how it's going to happen, man. All right? You're not going to fly yourself to Israel. You're not going to walk your ass to Israel. And you're not going to send yourself to Israel through the ship. All right? It's Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Through the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh being called up. Like it says in Revelations 18 and 4. Which, let me get to it. Revelations chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues you see we're not supposed to be partakers in this in this fucking world man especially something as wicked as babylon the great you know our mindset is on the kingdom like it says in the book of hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. It's a lock here. It always hides from me. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14. For here we have no continuing city, but we but we seek one to come. Alright? For here we have no continuing city, 
but we seek one to come. This is the book of Let's see here. Job chapter 20. Look at that one. Job chapter 20. Come on, man. Job 20 and 4. Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed on earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short? and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment all right and that's esau edom man all right though you're triumphant all right you're not always going to be triumphant because how about shim is going to stop you man you know it's been written a four time and the things that were written a four time were written for our learning all right for our increasing for our knowledge <coughs> So this is uh, This is Malachi chapter 2 and verse 17 ye have wearied Yahweh with your words yet ye say wherein have we wearied him when ye say everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of Yahweh and he delighteth in them or where is the God of judgment alright why because you think that because we're doing something good like scripture says man Woe to him that calleth evil good and good evil, all right? And you call what we do, all right, going out to the highways and, and the byways, warning people, letting them know who they are, letting them know that there's a destruction coming. You call that evil, all right? But you call it good whenever you want to go out there and preach all peace, peace, and all love, and all, all prosper, you know? That place that yells safety, safety, all right? They better watch themselves because destruction is coming, man. You know? So it says, back in, uh, back in Revelation 13 and verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. All right? So what's the number of his name? It's Chai Shai Stigma. All right? 666. You know? Which in the blue letter comes up as Nero. All right? Nero was a Roman. All right? Uh, uh, a king. A Caesar. You know? And we believe Donald Trump is Nero, man. You know? So we know that that mark of the beast, that RFID chip is coming, man. It's right around the corner. You know? So you have to have the mark in order to buy, in order to sell. You know? Which the mark is what? All right? It's not every Sabbath day, all right? It's every single day after the mark is presented, you know? So if the mark is presented the day after the, all right, the night after the Sabbath, all right? 
If it's presented that night, what well, you can start buying and selling. All right. How are you gonna buy and sell? What are you gonna present to buy and sell? Oh, I didn't keep the Sabbath yesterday. Oh, okay, you can buy, you can sell. You know? It's a physical, tangible thing, man. A physical and tangible thing, you know? The mark of the beast is not, all right, who is the beast, first and foremost? You know, who is the beast? Every time that I go into Revelation 13, all right, I always go back to the first verse and through the whole chapter, man. Why? Because it explains to you who the beast is. You ask a Christian, who is the beast? You know, if you get in the altercation of the mark of the beast. All right, well, first and foremost, before we get into the mark, who is the beast that's going to present the mark? Who is the beast? Oh, it's the devil himself. Lucifer is Satan. You know? When they're void of understanding. The beast is Nero. Uh, Nero, Salakia, NATO, and the EU. All right? Because in Revelation 13, it talks about the beast that rose up out of the sea. And in Revelation 17 and 15... It tells you that the, the beast that rose up out of the sea, all right, or the sea is a multitude of people, tongues, nations, kingdoms, all right? So it's a system that came out of these nations. What system came out? Where in 1957, you had the EEC Treaty, all right, which was the Treaty of Rome. The EEC, the European Economic Community, all right, created the Treaty of Rome. In 1957 all right and then later was known as uh, the EU all right and then later NATO came in you know so NATO and the EU came together all right out of the nations out of the tongues out of different kingdoms all right and that is the beast all right the beast system is what we have here in Babylon the Great America. Democracy. For the name of democracy, I went into that nation, raped, robbed, pillaged. All right? Stole everything they had in their villages. Just to set up democracy. In the name of democracy, all right, I went into Afghanistan, you know, and did all kinds of wickedness, turned the kingdom upside down, just so we can establish democracy and get rid of terrorism. You know? Esau Edom, the system, all right, establishes democracy, all right, in the name of righteousness, which is really in the name of, of their laws, all right, which is in the book of, uh, I believe it's Sirach, it might be Wisdom of Solomon, all right, but it, it, it talks about the two differences, all right? It talks about the Israelites, all right, because the Israelites are going to go after the laws of their God, of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. So the heathen, in order to try and copy that, they go after the laws, the laws of justice, all right? There's laws of righteousness, and then there's laws of justice, all right? The laws of justice. It's something that was created by the world, all right? Esau, Edom, and these other nations. NATO, the EU, they're after the laws of, 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 of justice, democracy, all right? That is the beast, you see? It's not some dude, all right, with a pitchfork, coming out of this big old hole that's going to happen on earth. And he's going to crawl out of that hole and he's going to look around and say, it's time for me to start fucking shit up, man. That's not going to happen. All right? You're never going to see that happen. If you're waiting for that day to happen, all right, the Most High is going to smite you before it happens. Why? Because that day is never going to come. All right? If you're waiting for Lucifer himself, 
all right, to present himself and tell you, hey, I'm the Antichrist, I'm Mr. Antichrist, all right? It's going to be too late because that day is never going to happen. You know? Let me go back into it. <clears throat> this is Revelation 13 and verse 17. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name, which is what? Allegiance. All right? Because that mark of the beast is a physical, tangible mark. Because that word mark in verse 16 and verse 17 is karagma. The word karagma is an incision, all right, which is really an imprintment, all right, or a carved mark. You know, an imprintment or a carved mark. You know, when you use a printer, all right, when you use a printer, it's not gonna be ink that slightly touches over the, the uh, uh, what's it called, the paper, all right? When you use, when you use, when you print out a piece of paper, all right, or when you print something on a paper, it's gonna be some, all right, some, some hard pressing down. Sometimes even after you're done printing out, you're gonna notice that the paper is gonna be, you know, like, like fingernails uh, had uh, a little bit of ink and pressed down on it. Why? Because it prints down hard. All right? Prints down hard. You know? So the same thing is going to happen with that mark of the beast. It's going to be an imprintment. All right? Which means to press down with great force. So it says, Here is wisdom, verse 18. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three score and six. All right, which is chai shai stigma, and stigma is the root word for stigmatis. Stigmatis meaning to pierce, to prick. All right, to prick something through. All right, which brings me to the book of Exodus, chapter twenty-one. And verse 5, go to it, Exodus, this is Exodus 21 and 5, and it reads, and if the servant shall plainly say I love my master my wife and my children I will not go out free now what did Yahawashai say man alright if you cannot hate mother, father, son, daughter brother you can't be a disciple of Yahawashim Yahawashai which means what if you can't distance yourself from this world all right, if you can't choose Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai over this fucking world, over a TV, over your job, all right, you don't deserve to be a priest to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. You don't deserve to receive the spirit to understand this knowledge, this wisdom, you know? So if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, my children, I will not go out free. Guess what? You're going to be a slave to Esau Edom, man. All right? And it's only going to be for a short moment, but the Most High will make it feel like it was forever. You see? The same thing, you know, a little bit ago, I made a video about, um, you know, the elect, the Gentiles, the Israelites, and, and the true Gentiles. All right? And I went into Antiochus Epiphanes when he received... Uh, judgment by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all right? First, the Most High plagued them with a plague, an invisible plague, a disease, all right, where the inside of his stomach started running out from the inside to the outside, 
All right, so to the point where his outside skin was shedding, coming off, you know? You had worms coming out of his body. He stunk, smelled like shit to the point to where his guards couldn't carry him anywhere. It was a, a noisome smell, all right? Which noisome is noise, all right? But when you hear something like a noisome smell, that means that shit was, was loud as hell, obnoxious, disgusting. You know? So you have Bashimia Washai has that power, man. You know? So when he comes back and he sees that especially Jake, especially you Israelites, and especially to the ones that knew about the law, statutes, and commandments, if you receive that RFID chip, man, you're, you're destined for death. You know? So it says, and if the servant shall plainly say, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. That means you're gonna go out as a bondman, all right, as a slave. We're gonna go out free, you know? Lord willing, I'm part of that number, you know? But Yahweh Shem Yahushai is gonna take his elect and they're gonna go out free. Deuteronomy 33, 26 to 29 tells you how Israel is gonna be living good, living large, living free. Living righteously, in righteousness, through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahushua. You know? So it says, verse 6, Then his master shall bring him unto the judges. Alright, let me, let me get this one real quick. So lock it. So continuing on, it says, He shall also bring him to the door and unto the door post, and his master shall bore his ear through with an awl, and he shall serve him forever. All right? That means when you wear an earring, it means you belong to somebody. You see? When you wear an earring, you belong to somebody. You know? It's a lock it. So, back then, in the ancient time, in order to have somebody belong to you, you had him take him in front of the judges, and then you had to pierce his ear, all right? You had to bore his ear. That means to bore out to, in a circular motion, all right? To bore his ear through with an awl. That means a pricking, uh, 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 device, you know? So back then, the Hebrews, that's what they used to do. Nowadays, that's the same thing they're going to do when they present the mark of the beast. You know? When they present the mark of the beast, they're going to prick your, your hand through with an awl. All right? And that word, that word bore is the Hebrew word ratazai, all right, which means to bore or pierce. All right, whenever you have an engine, all right, in a vehicle, which if, if you're trying to renew your, your engine, all right, so that you could basically start from, from uh, scratch, you know, with zero miles, what you do is you empty out your, your oil engine, all right, you take it to a, a machine shop, and in that machine shop, you're gonna bore out your engine, all right? That means you're going to carve out the edges of your engine on the inside, all right, to make it at least a, li a liter, all right? So if you have a 
it's going to become like a 2.1 liter, all right, which essentially adds like maybe one horsepower, all right, but it's going to bore it out by cutting the edges of the inside, all right, to the, to the maximum that it can be cut out, you know, whether that be a liter, liter and a half, or two liters, you know? That's the amount of space that's being carved out and added onto the engine, you know? That's the same thing that the Hebrews did back then. They would cut out your ear so that they would bore out your ear. That means they would cut out a piece of your ear, all right? So it's the same thing to bore, to cut, to pierce, you know? And that word owl or owl, all right, which is a, a instrument that's used, is the word maratazai, which means a boring instrument, all right? So when you go to the machine shop, you're gonna have this little pike, all right, this little needle, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna go in and it's gonna start cutting out all the pieces, all right? It's gonna mark them, and then the laser's gonna come through and the laser's gonna shave it off, you know? And that's how you bore out your engine, all right? Now with the human body, the way you bore out your ears is by piercing it. The same thing with the hand, all right? When you carve it out, it's because you're gonna pierce it. So let me go to uh, John 14 and verse 12. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also and greater works than these shall he do because i go to my father and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son if ye shall ask anything in my name i will do it all right so you have to know the name of yahweh shai you know so verse 15 if ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father that he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it's, it believeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth within you and shall be in you. All right? So this truth is not going to be believed by these other heathen, man by these other nations, by two-thirds of Israel, all right? Because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh didn't give it to them, you know? It's only given unto the nation of Israel. The spirit of truth is only given unto the nation of Israel, you know? So you have to keep his commandments, all right? Fear, you have to fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai in order to keep his commandments. Because if not, you're not going to do anything. You know? So when you fear Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, you're going to keep his commandments. When you keep his commandments, all right, because the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. So you start keeping his commandments. And you start learning this truth. And you start increasing in this truth. You know, that's just how it goes, man. Simple. So this is a, uh, let me get Leviticus, but let me go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in, Jer in Horeb for all Israel. All right? Let me read that again. Malachi 4 and 4. Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb 
for all Israel with statutes and judgments. All right? So you have to remember the law of Moses, you know? Keeping the law, statutes, and commandments to the best of your ability, you know? And that's what Yahweh Shai said too. If you love me, keep my commandments. You see? This is Leviticus 19 and 28. Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am Yahweh. That word marks there, all right, is the word kwai kwai in the Hebrew, which means incision, all right, an incision. Let me go back to Revelation 13. All right, and read verse 16 and 17. All right, so you shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. And like scripture says, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. All right, Babylon the Great lives in pleasure, man. All right, this world lives in pleasure. Our people live in pleasure. All right, so if you mark a mark upon you, all right, for the dead, it's going against the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You know? So if you have a tattoo, all right, and you come into this truth, what does that mean? That means don't get any more tattoos. You know? That means you stop yourself, you refrain yourself, all right, from going off. So this is Revelations 13 and 6. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And again, that word mark there is charagma, which means a, a, a carved mark, all right? An imprinted mark. So when you go to the word kwai kwai, in Leviticus 19 and 28, all right, that word there is incision, all right, an incision, you see? So what's going to happen when you get that RFID chip? You have to get it incision, all right? You have to get an incision. That means cut into the flesh, you know? It says... nor print any marks upon you, I am Yahweh. all right? And that word cutting there also means incision, you know? So to get an incision means to cut, man. You know, so those people that receive the mark of the beast, the RFID chip, all right? They're going against the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, you know? So it says, Revelations 14 Revelations 14 and 12 Here is the patience of the saints Here are they that keep the commandments of the Most High and the faith of Yahweh Shai and I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. <coughs> All right, so part of being in this ministry and this truth is to minister. You know, you don't just come into this truth and keep the law, statutes, and commandments, and, and, and knowing the mark of the beast is a mark, uh, the RFID chip, you don't just keep that all to yourself, man. You know? You're supposed to be going out to teach, to preach, to exhort, to rebuke, you know? So this is the book of J 
James chapter 2 and verse thir uh, 15. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, all right, and what is one of our prayers, man? All right. Abayanawa Shabashamayam. You know, Abayanawa, uh, uh, our Father, Shabashamayam, which are in heaven. Ratazakaha Yaisha. Holy be thy name. Yahweh. You know, in that prayer we say, Nathan la nawa la kham ka yawam. All right, Nathan yala. Nathan Lanawa give to us Lacham food, our daily food, Lacham Layawam, our daily food. Alright? Give to us our daily food, which is what? This word, man. This is our daily food. That's why Yahweh Shai said unto his apostles, beware of the of the bread of the Pharisees. You know? Beware of the bread of the Pharisees. And in the book of Proverbs, it talks about the bread of the righteous, which is what? The food, this wisdom. All right, because later the, the apostles figured out that when he said, Beware of the bread of the Pharisees, they were talking about doctrine. All right, and the book of Sirach, chapter 24, tells you that the doctrine is going to be poured out as prophecy. All right, that the truth is going to be poured out as prophecy as water as baptism as fire you know it all ties in together man you see so it says again james chapter 2 and verse 15, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, give us, uh, Lord, our daily food, all right, which is this word. It says, and one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? All right, so what 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 do you profit to the Most High, man? Calling yourself a Christian, a follower of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, if all you do is may God give you understanding, you give me that understanding, man. All right, you teach. All right, if you call yourself a Christian and you call yourself of a, a of some type of hierarchy of being a Christian, a follower of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. Teach, teach the doctrine. You know, you have to be instant in season and out of season, man. When it's warm, when it's cold, when it's so-so, you know. During COVID, you know. Teach these words, man. You know, that's why the book of 1 Corinthians 14 tells you you know you have to want those godly things all right but rather that you prophesy why because we're not going to come into this fold simply by just laying in our bed thinking man i wish i had wolverine superpowers all right that's not how we're going to make it into the kingdom man we're going to make it into the kingdom by the prophecies that we say that we speak that we relay to the next you know That's how it's going to happen. That's why Ezekiel 37, all right, talks about Ezekiel prophesying unto the dry bones. Why? Because we have to throw, our, throw this water, this holy water, which is this word, all right, unto the dry bones, the Israelites. You know? So it says, verse 16 again, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be you warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? All right? So you have to ask yourself, man, what do you profit? What do you bring to the table to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai? If you have this knowledge, 
and you're sitting at home like a couch potato, all right, going to work, minding your your business, being more of a busybody in, in this world than being a busybody in the scriptures, in the ways of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, you know, what do you profit? You know, ye are the salt of the earth. If the if the salt has lost its favor, flavor, wherein shall it be salted? Therefore, it is good for nothing, all right, but to be trodden underfoot. And when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai comes back, you're gonna be trodden underfoot if you're not found written in the book of life, man. And that's a fearful thing. You need to fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man. So it says, verse 17. Even so, faith, all right, if it hath not works, is dead being alone, all right, and their works do follow them. If you don't have works, then really you don't have faith, all right. Moses, all the all the great men of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, they all had works follow behind them, action, all right. The brother Yabatiza would always say the love the word love is not just an adjective to describe how you feel. It's a verb, man. The word love is a verb. You have to put action behind it. If you tell a woman I love you every single day for the rest of your life, all right, but you act like you you don't fucking you don't want her. Like she's a piece of trash that you just picked up outside. What is she going to do? She's going to look for somebody else, man. That's how this world reacts. You know? If your job tells you every single day, hey, man, you're great. You're a great employee. And then they treat you like shit every single day. They treat you like you ain't nothing. What are you going to do? You're going to leave that fucking job, man. You know? And Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai reserves way reserve uh, deserves way more respect than your damn job, than your damn woman. All right, than anything in this damn life, man. Count it all as dung, all as a loss, man, for the sake of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. You know, he deserves that much, and not even just that much. Everything else above, man, the Most High deserves it. You know. Because like scriptures say, we should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah, you know? Israel should have been as Sodom and Gomorrah, man. We should have been destitute, desolate, and stayed that way for destruction. But the loving kindness of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai brought us back into the fold. All right? Why? Because he's long-suffering. Because he's slow to anger. You know, it's like when you had a, a strict parent and you would jump on the couches, they wouldn't fucking warn you sometimes, man. They go up to you and beat the shit out of you. Get off the fucking couch, man. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is all about a balance. He'll tell you three times, four times, five times. And then when enough is enough, you're cut off forever, man. And that's a frightful thing. That's something scary to fall under that spirit, all right? To fall under that that curse from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. It's scary for real, man, you know? So we go out here to preach to our people, to wake them up, all right? So we can go back to what, what's promised to us, all right? So we can live in righteousness, you know? But then you have people like Vocab Malone and his goons, you know, they don't want us to be righteous. So what do they do? No, nah, you got to come back to Christianity, man. Man, if you go back to Christianity, you are, you're not just lost, man. You're, you're dead. All right. You're walking in death. That's all I'm going to say. You know, so it says verse 18. Yea, a man may say thou has faith. And I have works. Show me thy faith. All right. Show me thy faith without thy works. And I will show thee 
my faith by my works. Are we saved by works? No, we're not. All right, we're saved by the mercy, the grace of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, but the faith that we carry is gonna bring forth works. You know. It's it's like a fine line, and, and and how can I put it? It's kind of like that thing. What was it like five years ago? All right, there was this thing on on the internet. You know, way before I was in the truth, there was this thing on the internet where they posted a a, a, a dress. Some people saw black and blue, and other people saw gold and white. You know. That is how this truth is, man. That is how this truth is. A large majority of people are going to see black and blue. All right? The vast majority of people are going to see black and blue. All right? But a small remnant is going to see gold and white. You know, that, that's very spiritual, man. That is a very spiritual thing. That black represents fucking covered, man. The blue, <coughs> what does blue represent? Pride or something like that, you know? And then you have white, which represents pure, and gold, which represents riches. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding, that's our riches. That's our purity. That's what purifies us. You know? And it was all about perspective. It was all about the way that you perceived it. All right? The way your eyes receive the colors. The way that your eyes receive the reflection of the colors. That's all it really was. Whether it really was blue and black or whether it really was white and gold. You know? But that's how this truth is. All right? It's called an optical illusion. You know? You have these two like this, and from how I'm showing it, the vast majority is going to see it and not understand it. But you have the elect, all right, that out of a different perspective, they're going to see that, that whole picture, you know, that whole frame. That's how this truth is, man. You know? Oh, the scripture says you're not saved by works. That's right, you're not saved by works. Well, you're saying you have to have works. That's right, you have to have works. Well, that doesn't make un that doesn't make any sense. All right, yeah, to you. But the righteous will understand. All right. Then when you have faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, all things are possible, man. All right, those things that you're calling impossible, where it's not possible for you to, it's not possible for you. That all of that goes out the window. When Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai puts that spirit on you. All right, to receive the, 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 the true perspective. All right, you're going to come to the realization of what is true, what is false, what is folly, and what is faith. You know? And with that, we've been increased. With that, we've been blessed, man. All right? So us knowing that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast, all right, to you it may not make any sense. You know? But to us it makes perfect sense. You know? And you're not, you, all right, talking about outside of this faith, you're not going to know what's true and what's false until Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai comes back and sets the record straight. You know? So you have to have those faith, uh, uh, those works. So verse 19, Thou believest that there is one God, Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. All right, Esau Edom also believes that there's one God, man. Esau Edom knows that there is one God. All right, you had that famous scientist Albert Einstein, all right, which was a German. All right, Albert Einstein believed that there was a God, that there is a God out there in space, in the outside realms of what we call outer space. <laughs> All right? He believed. He said that there was one. You know? 
science, true knowledge, all right, what was a, uh, what's that word? Was a fingertip, or a finger, uh, fingerprint, all right, of the most high. DNA is a fingerprint of the most high, you know? The way everything operates and orchest is orchestrated is a finger, uh, fingerprint of the most high. So Albert Einstein admitted and said he believes that it's true. The most high does exist, but he does not believe in a personal God. Why? Because he wasn't an Israelite, man. You know, he wasn't part of the elect, I should say. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't part of the elect, you know, Stephen Hawking's not part of the elect. You see, they don't believe in a personal God, so they think, well, maybe God's not real. Or they believe that God's real, but they don't believe in him being personal to them. Why? Because he's only personal to the house of Israel, you know. So verse 19 again. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. All right? They tremble that there is one God. They tremble that there is a higher power, man. But yet they're still wicked. You, you don't even tremble at the fact that there is a, a most high God. You know? You don't show any type of fear, man. It says, verse 20, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. All right? Faith without works is dead. So what we're waiting for is for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to show all us, show all those things that we know by the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh to be true. You know? We're just waiting for the events to unravel, to start happening. Because we know they're real, all right? We know that it's going to happen, and it's going to happen soon, man, according to the way the times are going, all right? It's going to happen real soon, you know? I don't see too many years passing by, and I don't want too many years to pass by despite what the flesh or what other people want, man, you know? So this is Revelations chapter 16. All right, because those that receive the mark of the beast are going to receive a noisome and grievous sore, man. Same thing that happened to a, a what's his name? Um, Antiochus Epiphanes. You know? Same thing that happened to Antiochus, which was a, a, a grievous sore that fell upon him. All right, an invisible. Um, what does it say? An invisible infection, all right? Disease, a plague that happened to Antiochus Epiphanes where he was eaten from the inside out. The same thing is going to happen to you that received the mark of the beast, that RFID chip, all right? Verse 6, uh, <coughs> chapter 16, Revelation 16 and 1. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of the most high yahweh upon the earth and the first went and poured out the vials upon the earth and there fell noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image and the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as the blood of a dead man and every living soul died in the sea all right so first is going to come the rfid chip all right and then it's going to come world war three all right in that order rfid chip and then world war three the destruction of babylon the great ezekiel uh salakia uh, isaiah <coughs> Isaiah 47 verse 1 all the way through all right and and Revelations 18 
all right? But on those that receive the RFID chip, there's gonna be a noisome and grievous sore, which the, the man that created the RFID chip, all right? After he created it, he was told to modify it in order to fit into animals, all right? So he, he modified it, it fit into animals, and then it was tested on animals, all right? And then he didn't name any names, but he said higher ups came to him and said, will this work on humans? We want to try it on humans, you know? And then he realized that what he had done was created the mark of the beast the early stages of the mark of the beast you know which the mark of the beast is that rfid chip so he went into the book of revelations and realized that what he did was in fact start the early stages of the rfid chip which is the mark of the beast and one of the things he mentioned was that when that uh what is that Nik nikolai or that uh um that battery acid that's inside of the uh, the RFID chip, all right. Whenever a little bit of it leaks out to the skin, it creates a, a grievous sore, man. All right, a painful sore, you know. So, hey, man, you can receive the the RFID chip if you want. All right, if you think that you're gonna be safe receiving it, you can receive it, but just know that destruction is coming. All right. And after you receive that RFID chip, just know that World War III is coming and nobody's coming to save you. All right, which reminds me of Ezekiel 37. So like I keep saying Ezekiel 37, Isaiah 47, and the last verse. Go back to it. Jeremiah, Isaiah 20, <clears throat> 35. 50. Isaiah 47 in verse 14 Behold, they shall be a stubble The fire shall burn them They shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame There shall not be a coal to warm at Nor a fire to sit before it Alright, because it's going to be a, a desolate wilderness You know after those missiles hit, man, after everything is said and done in the space of an hour, Babylon will be destroyed and there will be nothing, nothing left. All these nice cars you got, all these women you got, all this money you got, <coughs> is going to be brought down to zero. All right. Over there in New York, the Twin Towers, all right, was called Ground Zero because it was laid waste, desolate, all right? Pretty soon, America will be known as Ground Zero because it's gonna be laid waste and desolate, like it says in Joel chapter two, all right? The destruction of Babylon. So it says, <clears throat> verse 15, thus shall they be unto thee with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth, they shall wander everyone to his quarter. None shall save thee. All right, so all these nations that you dealt with this whole time, that had your back, that you were making trades with, none of them are gonna give a shit about you, man. When they see the destruction that's coming, the merchants, they're just gonna go back to where they were from. All right, because all these other nations are gonna come up against you, man. All right, in the book of uh, 2 Ezra 13, tells you how that after every nation goes back to their own place and Yahweh Hashem Yahweh comes back all of them are going to turn to their corners to their quarters or from their quarters they're going to turn their attention to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh and they're going to try and attack Yahweh Hashem Yahweh man you know So that destruction that's coming, man, it's going to be one thing right after another, man. Right now, it seems nice and slow. Things are getting better. All right? But pretty soon, America is going to be destroyed, man. And that's just a simple fact. All right? Brought to you by Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, man. So with that, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh 
by Hashem Yahawashai, by Hashem Rakakwadash, double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone, Shalom to you Akim out there, and Ababa Ba, death to America, Shalom.